<laughs> I thought I was at a thousand subscribers yesterday. The Ultra Ball thought that we were at a thousand subscribers. The Ultra Banana chilling in the white closet door behind us thought that we were at a thousand subscribers. <laughs> nope. We dropped back to 989 once we applied for monetization because I want to use any ad revenue to help pay for my medical expenses. We dropped right back down to 989. Haven't seen a quick crash like that since maybe the stock market. So let's dive on into, well, old school Yu-Gi-Oh versus modern Yu-Gi-Oh because I need a fucking topic that's going to get me to a thousand subs. And we're only six away. So let's dive on into it, shall we? And I hope the fuck to God I did not just jinx myself. On destroying the ever living boo boo stain out of that subscribe button so we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. We're only six subscribers away, ladies and gentlemen. I really do thank you all so much for all the support. All jokes aside, like, I guess someone made like 11 alternate accounts to fuck with me. I don't know what happened, but either way, we're gonna get there. It just it takes a little bit longer, but that's okay because it shows that we grinded, that we actually got there, and that we didn't need alternate accounts to get there. So thank you all so much for the support and thank you for just subbing to the channel and watching my happy ass talk about Yu-Gi-Oh. So I want to talk about uh, modern Yu-Gi-Oh versus old school Yu-Gi-Oh. And this is actually a topic that I want to come back to later on down the line with our homie Valley D, aka the biggest of Bruce's number 94, <laughs> Big Bruce 94, our homie, uh, because we did actually talk about this a while back. And when I tried to record it, my dumb ass didn't record it right. So it just came out sounding like shit. And what is interesting, and, and really, I heard a lot of this from uh, our homie Derek, and that was that modern Yu-Gi-Oh! obviously is a much faster game, but it's also an interesting way to look at the game. You know, I've talked about in the past how on my Master Shit videos, <laughs> how, you know, I talk about a lot of the comments that people give me, like, oh, my opponent just beat me in, like, two turns and they summon like 10 times and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, welcome to modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Because that's what it is. That's the name of the game. In the sense of in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! You are trying to build a castle. You're trying to build a board, so to speak. So in the sense of you're building a board and you're building your castle, you're building up your armies and things like that. Can your opponent's army or deck in this case, can they break through that castle wall? Can they break through that castle defense? Can they get through your moat full of hand traps <laughs> and Nibiru's and Aigidos and Kelbecks to mill the shit out of your deck. And can they break through with board breakers like Lightning Storm, Evenly, Dark Ruler, Sphere Mode, Lava Golems, you name it, to make their own board and break yours and win the game from there. Whereas with old school Yu-Gi-Oh, what you see a lot of is obviously games that take more turns and it is more chess paced. Uh, chess based if I could talk today and even like in my goat format retrospective video I talked about how you're playing your deck as much as you're playing your opponent's deck you want to understand the choke points of their deck you want to understand what makes their deck tick and you do still do that a lot in modern Yu-Gi-Oh but it's more of the sense of I'm going to build my board I know what for example tier element loses to and of course as my computer turns on uh, and I know what I need to do to stop them from making a board so that I can keep mine alive. You know, if you go against tier element, yeah, it's good to know the choke points if you're playing hand traps and stuff. But I mean, if you activate dimension shifter, you know, you pretty much won the game, right? Like the only way that the tier element player can negate your D shifter on your turn is like if they have cypher and gear gamma and no tier element decks playing cypher and gear gamma. Like that's just booty booty butt cheeks. And so... You know, you know that if you do that and you build up a board and maybe a couple of negates, if you even need that at that point, you're going to win the game. Whereas in something like GOAT format, the game game one may take 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes, and you're slowly chipping away at each other. At the same time, it takes you like 15 minutes into the game to realize, oh, I'm probably going to lose this game. Whereas five minutes into game one in a modern Yu-Gi-Oh match, you realize, okay, I've probably lost this game. Let's go to the next game. On top of that too, what you see a lot more of in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, I feel, is not showing your opponent what you're playing. You know, think about it. If you go against like tier element and, you know, they make their board and everything and you just can't out it when you draw for turn, why even show them what you're playing? Just say, nah, I'm a scoop. You got it. Go to the next game. Your opponent doesn't know what you're playing and they're like, well, shit, I don't know how to side deck. So they can maybe side deck things for going second, assuming that you're going to go first, 
But then if they do that, they run the risk of you saying, you go first, and then they get to try and build their board again. But then if you're ready to go second, then that can work in your favor. Or if they don't know that they're going up against a bad matchup and they just got lucky because you bricked, then they're going to realize, oh shit, I didn't even side deck correctly game two. Then you go into game three and it's a one game, just it's a one game match at that point. Because now the tier element player has to hopefully be able to make a board big enough that you can't out, even though they realize now they're going against a bad matchup. So I feel like that that's something that you see a lot more of in modern Yu-Gi-Oh compared to old Yu-Gi-Oh because the pace of the game has gotten much quicker. You know, whereas in old school Yu-Gi-Oh, it may take you 15 to 20 minutes in to realize, yeah, I'm going to probably lose this game. And not everybody enjoys that. You know, surprisingly, not everybody enjoys a slow chess paced feel of Yu-Gi-Oh. Some people like those faster formats. You know, there are formats that are slower that I've loved. There are formats that have been much faster than let's say GOAT format, for example, that I've just loved or that I've despised. You know, Necros format when it was tier zero, I hated. Zodiac tier zero format, I had some fun with. Like I still remember spending $100 a piece on my Zodiac barrages and I got a play set. Ended up spending $700 on my entire Zodiac deck. And then I ended up spending like 120 on Trickstar after getting a case of Code of the Duelist. And I ended up getting an invite with it. Like it just worked out for me, especially in a tier zero format at the beginning of the Link era. You know, I love that format. Uh, you look at when Infernities were tier one. I love that format. I love playing Infernities. I loved having my world championship copies of Infernity Archfiend that were like $50, $60 a piece. Like it was a really fun time. Then there's been slower formats that I've enjoyed that show you the feeling of chess, so to speak, in Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, I think of something like Hat Format or Gear Gear where, you know, you're kind of doing slower paced things. Even sub Terror is basically just another form of Gear Gear, setting monsters, flipping up and getting their effects. It's more slow control based. And that's fine, especially when those decks are able to keep up. You know, yeah, you have some more fast paced things and slower paced decks like being able to go Red Eyes Fusion and drop a Dragoon. You wouldn't be doing that in 2014 Hat Format. But the deck as a whole, in regards to sub -terror, is still a control deck. They're just able to make an Omni negate in the form of Dragoons that's just really busted. So, at the end of the day, is there really a way to play Yu-Gi-Oh! that is better over the other? No, there's not. Because both old school Yu-Gi-Oh!, so to speak, and modern Yu-Gi-Oh!, have their pros and cons. You know, old school Yu-Gi-Oh!, some people would say that it's a con, that the format, like let's just say GOAT format as an example of old school Yu-Gi-Oh!, since that's like one of the best formats of all time, is much slower. And people that have grown up playing the faster Yu-Gi-Oh!, and that's what they're used to, like 2015 and on, they may not really like that format. They don't like the slow pace. They like to be able to build a board full of negates and say, hey, I just popped off and did this five minute combo. Can you even break this board? And if you can, let's see if I can make a comeback. Like a lot of people enjoy that. And so, you know, some people don't want to sit there for 10 minutes going like Thunder Dragon, ditch my other two copies, fail to search, drop out Chaos Sorcerer, you know, over like a 10 turn period, you know, like in GOAT format, you're maybe going to set a Sangin to bluff out a Nobleman across out, set one to two back row and pass. Then if you're putting Heavy Storms, you just chain Jar Greed and like Reckless Greed and draw three cards. Like, you know, people don't like that kind of counterplay. They think it's just really slow and monotonous. And even some people I've heard say skillless, which I think that that's a little bit of a stretch. And then there's pros to having fast paced Yu-Gi-Oh. You, you see a lot more FTKs that are just... Like, yeah, they're dumb. FTKs are never healthy, but like, they're just funny to watch. Like, Cannon Soldier FTK with Morphtronic Telephone. Like, you know, there's things like that that people enjoy playing that they have a better chance of playing with because modern Yu Gi Oh! has much more faster cards and a lot more card choices because the card pool is so much bigger. So at the end of the day, guys, let me know what you enjoy more. Do you enjoy old school Yu-Gi-Oh? Do you enjoy modern Yu-Gi-Oh? Do you enjoy doing a combination of both? Because that's what I do. I sometimes go back to GOAT format if I'm tired of the current format. And I'll just play GOAT format with my dad. And he'll play Burn. And I'll play Chaos Turbo or GOAT Control. Um, we've even been kind of testing around with Edison now recently. And like I've just been playing like Junk and Debris with Plants and Debris Dragon and Black Rose, Drill Warrior, all that stuff. And it's been great to go down memory lane because I remember playing those formats in their prime. And I remember having so much fun in those formats. So at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong with old school Yu-Gi-Oh compared to modern Yu-Gi-Oh. For people that complain about the modern game that don't realize the intricacies of like hand traps and things like that, I think they're really missing out. 
And I think it just comes from being ignorant. And that's not really a bad thing. It just comes from them being ill-informed. And that's okay because they can watch a video like this and realize what's changed. And maybe they too will get into the game and realize, hey, modern Yu-Gi-Oh is kind of fun. And if they don't think it's fun, then go back to the old school game. And that's fine too. That's why card games are great. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you again so much for almost 1,000 subscribers. And I'll see you in the next video.